Dirty old birds show changes in U.S. air pollution. Researchers analyzed the amount of soot on birds in museums from Rust Belt cities to track air pollution in the U.S. over the last 135 years. A new paper shows the discoloration of birds in museum collections can be used to estimate the amount of black carbon air over time. Researchers sampled over a thousand birds collected over the last 135 years to find out and quantify the effects of soot in the air in Rust Belt cities like Chicago, Detroit, and Pittsburgh. To track changes in sootiness, the scientists photograph the birds and measure the light reflected off of them. They found that older birds were dirtier and new birds were cleaner. The team discovered that soot on birds closely tracks the use of coal over time. Researchers also pointed out that even though newer birds are cleaner, it doesn't necessarily mean U.S. air is less polluted. Many of the pollutants released into the atmosphere today aren't as easily tracked as soot. I love the smell of pollution in the morning. Most of the plastic in the ocean comes from these countries. Plastic waste is slowly but surely taking over the world's oceans, and the bulk of them apparently comes from just five Asian countries. A study from Ocean Conservancy estimates that 55 to 60 percent of plastic polluting the oceans comes from five countries, China, Indonesia, Philippines, Thailand, and Vietnam. Uncollected and mismanaged waste on land accounts for about 80 percent of the 8 million metric tons of trash that flow into the oceans each year. Environmental organization Greenpeace claims corporations are also at fault for selling products in single-use plastic packaging, especially in so-called sachet economies like the Philippines. Various studies have shown that plastic pollution negatively impacts marine animals and may be indirectly affecting humans through the food chain. Fortunately, improving waste management practices in the five countries can result in a 45 percent reduction of global plastic waste leakage by 2025. In tackling plastic pollution, everyone has a role to play. From governments and big conglomerates to the people on the street, every bit helps. Yep, there's plastic in your sea salt. Karmic justice comes swift with Mother Nature, as plastic waste we've been throwing in the ocean is now coming back to us, literally, via the food we eat. Microplastic particles typically flow into the ocean, since they're often too small to be filtered out by sewage treatment plants. The tiny pieces of plastic are mistaken for food and ingested by fish and other sea creatures. Seafood meant for human consumption often contain these particles, and now a new study shows that salt may also be a vehicle for plastic contamination. Researchers studied sea salt extracted from eight different countries and found that nearly all were contaminated with 72 foreign particles. Only the one from France was found to be free of contaminants. 30 of the particles were microplastics, 17 were pigments that may have once been plastic, and 4 were dust particles. 21 could not be identified. Scientists say the current concentration of plastic is low and won't affect human health. But if plastic pollution continues, those levels may increase and potentially become detrimental to our well-being. So for now, maybe ease up on the salt, and more importantly, reduce, reuse, recycle. Researchers find plastic-breaking fungus. New research coming out of China may hold the key to dealing with the world's massive plastic waste problem. Plastic is not easily biodegradable and can take thousands of years to decompose. A group of researchers found Aspergillus tubingensis, a common soil fungus, at a dump in Pakistan. Under laboratory conditions, it was shown to break down plastic in weeks, not years. Aspergillus tubingensis has previously been found in patients with lung conditions, such as cystic fibrosis. The fungus used its roots to break apart the plastic, but its effectiveness was found to be influenced by other factors, such as temperature and pH levels. Researchers say that tweaking these could pave the way for fungi to be used in waste treatment plants or in soils impacted by plastic. So this is where the waste in the ocean ends up. Researchers say the Arctic Ocean has become the last stop for plastic waste dumped into the seas, and trash is now piling up in the once pristine waters. According to a study, warm surface currents bring plastic trash from densely populated coastlines up to the Arctic Ocean, where the waste becomes trapped. It's estimated that the trash stored in the Arctic Ocean currently accounts for about 3% of the 110 million tons of plastic waste in the oceans. 
There are approximately 300 billion tiny pieces of plastic waste in the surface water, and it's highly likely there's even more trash on the sea floor. The researchers say their findings reveal only the beginning of plastic waste migration to the Arctic Ocean and warn the consequences will be felt at a greater scale in the Arctic ecosystem.